The water understands civilization well. It wets my foot, but prettily. It chills my life, but wittily. It is not disconcerted. It is not broken hearted. Well used, it decayeth joy. Adorneth, doubleth joy. Ill used, it will destroy. In perfect time and measure, with a face of golden pleasure, elegantly destroy. A very good morning to one and all present here. I, Dia Singh, welcome you all to the Social Science Exhibition presented by the students of Class 11th and 12th. The Social Science Exhibition has been made possible because of the constant collaboration of very enthusiastic and very creative students with the assistance and guidance of their very hardworking and talented teachers. So without any further delay, let us begin the program. Here we have Purnima Sharma, Shivani Singh and Vaishnavi Singh, all of class 12C, with their video showcasing the relationship between environment and people, seen from three different lenses, namely history, sociology and political science. So without any further ado, let's begin. St. Teresa School presents School Exhibition, a project on safe environment. Environment is no one's property to destroy. It's everyone's responsibility to protect. We will be looking at some environmental issues and the ways to solve them from the lenses of history, sociology, and political science. Let's travel from present to past as historians do. Let's see how history studies environmental issues. Environmental history deals with the history of human impacts on nature and the interactions between humans and nature. It asks how nature influences humans, how humans intervene in nature and how nature and humans interact. To be able to understand these processes, it also investigates changes in nature not caused by human action. Green Movement The green politics or green movement or environmental movement can be defined as a social movement for the conservation of the environment or for the environment of the state policy especially inclined towards the environment. In other words, it is the movement to protect the environment through changes in public policy. Now, let's just get started with the movement that played the very very important role in the environmental history, that is the Chipko movement. The Chipko movement or Chipko Andolan was a forest conservation movement in India. It began in 1973 in Uttarakhand. Then it was a part of Uttar Pradesh and went on to become a rallying point for many future environmental movements all over the world. Now let's talk about the person who played the very very important role in the Chipko movement. It was Sundalal Bahuguna, a Gandhian activist who gave the movement a proper direction and its success meant that the world immediately took notice of this non-violent movement which was to inspire in time many similar eco-groups by helping to slow down the rapid deforestation, expose vested interest, increase social awareness and the need to save trees, increase ecological awareness and and demonstrate the viability of people power. He also used the slogan, Ecology is the permanent economy. Bishnoi movement. This movement was started by Sage Sombaji around 1700 AD against deforestation. After that, Amrita Devi forwarded the movement. The 363 people from the Bishnoi community were killed in the protest. When the king of this region came to know the protest and killing, then he rushed to the village and apologized and declared the region as protected area. It is noteworthy that this legislation is still exist today. Apiko movement. In 1983, on the lines of Chipko movement, Pandurang Hegde launched a movement which has come to known as Apiko movement in Karnataka. Its main objectives were afforestation as well as development, conservation and proper utilization of forest in the best manner. The meaning of Apiko is to express one's affection for a tree by embracing it. 
Silent Valley Movement. It is an area of tropical evergreen forest in Kerala. It is very rich in biodiversity. The environmentalist and the local people strongly objected to the Hydel Power project being set up here in 1973. Under pressure, the government had to declare it the National Reserve Forest in 1985. Tehri Dam Conflict. This movement was started by the local people around 1980s and 1990s because the dam project was constructed in the seismic sensitive region and people think that it causes submergence of forest areas along with Tehri town. Despite of protest, the construction of the dam is being carried out with police protection as Sundalal Bahugana is sitting on fast unto death. After assurance from the government to review the project, Bahuguna ended his fast but construction goes on, though at a slower pace. Hence, we can say numerous grassroots environmental movements were started against the developmental activities that have endangered the ecological balance that changes the public policy more inclined towards the environment. Studying history helps us understand and grapple with complex questions and dilemmas by examining how the past has shaped and continues to shape global, national and local relationships between societies and people. Let's now use the lens of sociology. Sociology studies the social relationships with the environment that have changed over time and they vary from place to place. There are many urgent environmental problems that demand our attention. To address these crises effectively, we need a sociological framework for understanding why they occur and how they might be prevented or resolved. Ecology. All societies have an ecological basis. Ecology denotes the wealth of physical, biological systems and processes of which humans are one element. The ecology of a place is affected by interaction between its geography and hydrology due to cultural interventions caused by human actions. For example, the used potato today in India, though seems to be natural, was actually a modification in environment by cultural interventions. Ecology indeed has been modified by such human actions. For instance, what appears to be a natural feature of the environment, such as aridity or flood proneness, is often produced by human intervention. Role of social organizations. The interaction between environment and society is shaped by social organization. It is basically this relationship that different social groups have with property that determines how and by whom natural resources can be used. Social organization influences how different social groups relate to their environment. Risk Society According to Anthony Giddens, a risk society is a society increasingly preoccupied with the future that generates the notion of risk. We consider ourselves as living in risk societies because human relations with the environment have become increasingly complex in modern society due to spread of industrialization. The complex industrial technologies and modes of organization require sophisticated management systems which are often fragile and vulnerable to error. We don't fully grasp the technologies and products we use, hence we are unaware of the risk involved. Major environmental problems and risks Resource depletion, pollution, global warming, genetically modified organism, natural and man-made environmental disasters. Sustainability is achieved when all people on earth can live well without compromising the quality of life for future generations. Sociology has defined the following as essential components of sustainability. Social inequality, social institutions, population and the environment, and societal change. Why? Sustainable development may require different actions in every region of the world. Efforts to build a truly sustainable way of life require the integration of action in three key areas economic growth and equity, conserving natural resources 
and the environment and social development now let's look through the lens of political science why is it so difficult to control or fix pollution how can we justify harvesting the world's natural resources at unsustainable rates scientific knowledge and technological advances alone cannot tackle these environmental challenges they also involve difficult political choice and trade offs both locally and globally environmental politics allocate the different ways society attempts to deal with the political decisions needed to prevent or recover from environmental damage environmental politics is concerned with four particular aspects of the study of environmental policies first it examines the evolution of environmental movements and parties second it provides analysis of the making and implementation of public policy in the area of the environment at national international and local levels third it carries comment on ideas generated by the various environmental movements and organizations and by individual theorists fourth it aims to cover the international environmental issues which are of increasing salience green parties a green party is a formally organized political party based on the principle of green politics such as social justice environmentalism and nonviolence government and environmental issues the swachh bharat abhiyan the swachh bharat abhiyan is india's biggest cleanliness drive ever the campaign covers as many as 4041 towns and aims at cleaning streets roads and infrastructure It was officially launched on October 2, 2014 at Rajghat, New Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was even nominated as ninth prominent public figures from the country to support and encourage the initiative. The Clean Ganga Mission. A Clean Ganga is deemed as Narendra Modi's pet project. 3 days after swearing in as the 15th Prime Minister of India, Modi resigned from the Vadodara constituency and decided to represent Varanasi in order to serve Ganga Ma. Prime Minister Modi also placed the Ganga Action Plan under the direct supervision of Water Resources Minister Ms. Uma Bharti. Modi's Clean Ganga Plan involved five ministries working in close co-cooperation to see the dream project through. Global initiatives to save environment. Kyoto Protocol. The Kyoto Protocol is an international agreement within the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which commits the countries which have adopted the targets to reduce the greenhouse emissions with legally binding emission reduction commitments. Montreal Protocol it was finalized in the year 1987 and adopted on 15 September 1987 it is a multilateral environmental agreement and this protocol is the only UN treaty ever up to date which was initially approved by only 46 countries but now it is ratified by all 197 UN member countries or states This protocol regulates the production and consumption of man-made chemicals which can deplete the ozone layer. When we speak of climate change, there is a perception of a desire to secure the comforts of our lifestyle. But when we speak of climate justice, we demonstrate our sensitivity and resolve to secure the future of the poor from perils of natural disasters. Let's take pledge together. we can take action to create lasting solutions and protect the future of nature as a responsible citizen i pledge to save and restore our beloved mother earth in the interest of humanity and help protect human lives i dedicate myself to ensure that the future generation receives a habitable planet Now that was an outstanding performance indeed. Now moving on further, here we have another video by Sanjita Ambest from Class 12C, wherein she will be depicting how human development destroyed the environment. I 
Sai Sanjay Dambas from class 12C is now going to present. The time when human development started the destruction of nature. In human concept of development led to violent hoarding of earth resources. We have a story in which there are four friends decided to make people aware about the horrible condition of environment. They all together convinced few neighbors to join them. And suddenly, one of them started visualizing the nature in its pure form in part. When lands were covered with forest, water was crystal clear and mountain peaks, such as the sky. Then human eyes evolved and developed themselves. But in the way of all these processes, they left a dreadful mark in the environment. Now we see how pollution recognized in a country or internationally all over the world. Deforestation. It was first recognized when about half of eastern North America lived deforested in 1870. an outstanding performance now moving on further we have another video by disha nagar and vaishnavi singh on a very important issue of the 21st century that is the industrial pollution so without any further ado let's begin industrial pollution as now only i was reading newspaper and i read that how much pollution does industries cause let's study about industrial pollution it's the pollution which can be directly linked with industry this form of pollution is one of the leading causes of pollution worldwide it can also impact air quality and it can enter the soil causing widespread environmental problems types and effects of industrial pollution air pollution It's the release of pollutants such as gases, particles, biological molecules, etc., into the air that is harmful to human health and the environment. It has led to a steep increase in various illnesses, and it continues to affect us on a daily basis. With so many small, mid, and large-scale industries coming up, air pollution has taken a toll on the health of the people and the environment. Water pollution. Most industries require large amounts of water for their work. When involved in a series of processes, 
the water comes into contact with heavy metals, harmful chemicals, radioactive waste and even organic sludge. These are either dumped into open oceans or rivers. As a result, many of our water sources have a high amount of industrial waste in them, which seriously impacts the health of our ecosystem. The same water is then used by farmers for irrigation purposes, which affects the quality of food that is produced. Water pollution has already rendered many groundwater resources useless for humans and wildlife. It can at best be recycled for further usage in industries. Noise pollution not only results in irritation and anger, it can also cause hearing impairment, increased heart rate and blood pressure among other physiological effects. Unwanted sound is an irritant and a source of stress. Industrial and construction activities, machinery, factory equipment, generators, saws and pneumatic and electric drills also make a lot of noise. Thermal pollution is any deviation from the natural temperature in a habitat and can range from elevated temperatures associated with industrial cooling activities to discharges of cold water into streams below large impoundments. The sudden temperature change poses a health risk to a wide range of aquatic and amphibious creatures. It damages water ecosystems and reduces animal populations. Ways to control industrial pollution Source control Adopting new technology, efficient training of employees for safe use and development of better technology for disposal of waste and being more conscientious about the use of raw materials can help control industrial pollution at the source. Recycling Recycling is the process of converting waste materials into new materials and objects. The recovery of energy from waste materials is often included in this concept. The recyclability of a material depends on its ability to reacquire the properties it had in its original state. Cleaning of Resources Organic methods should be adopted to clean the water and soil, such as using microbes that use heavy metals and waste as weed naturally. Cooling rooms or bins need to be developed that allow industries to recycle the water they need instead of pushing it back into the natural water source it came from. Industry Site Selection Consideration of Location or the sites and the potential impact on the surrounding environment can help reduce harmful consequences. Proper treatment of industrial waste. By developing and implementing adequate treatment facilities for handling industrial waste and proper habits can reduce pollution. Let's take pledge that we will be developing without harming our environment. Thank you. What an informative video, an eye-opener indeed. Now moving on, here we have Mahi Bharadwaj, Shristi Kashyap and Ishita Gupta, all of class 11C, with their very creative and indeed very informative talk show. and I am here along with my classmates Mahi Bharadwaj and Srishti Kashyap. We are here to enlighten you about the damages and the environmental problems that are occurring due to the immersion of idols into the water bodies and the cremation ceremonies that are occurring on our daily basis. In this session, we will be having a little questionnaire wherein we will ask questions from each other and answer them accordingly so that we are able to tell you what all things people use to make these idols and these coffins and what materials we can use that are eco-friendly and are proper alternatives for these materials so that our environment is well nurtured and we can complete all these rituals. 
I hope you all enjoy the session and find it informative. So let's start with the questions. Hello everyone, my name is Shishti Kashyap and my question to Ishita is that as you said that the crimination processes and the emotion of idols in water bodies are polluting our environment. So are you directly appealing our audience to not to worship the god and goddesses and also not to follow the rituals? Well, it was never my intention to suggest our audience in order to stop these activities. Because these activities have been on earth from a very long time, we can say since ancient times. Even we are a part of such activities, so we are no one to stop them. Here then, we are referring to all the pujas and the rituals that are happening all around the world and these include the immersion of idols into the water bodies. For example, festivals such as Durga Puja and Ganesh Chaturthi include the immersion of idols, wherein the materials that they are made of, for example, clay. Clay is the basic material that people use to make these idols. Clay dissolves into the water body and pollutes our ocean on a very high extent. When we are born on this earth, we are certainly meant to leave this earth one day as well. So, cremation ceremonies are held in order to bury or burn our closed ones beneath the earth. Some religions have faith in burying people and some religions have faith in burning people. But the wood that we use to either burn or to bury and the fuel that we are using for such processes is damaging our environment on a very high level and we are not noticing it. So, our main motive is to appeal our audience in order to use eco-friendly alternatives so that our environment is well preserved for the future. Hello everyone, my name is Mahi Bharadwaj. So as you explained that these are the practices we can't deny and we know that they pollute the environment to a larger extent. So Shishti, can you please address some of the threats involved with such practices? I would like to inform you all about the environmental threats which are the crimination practices and the immersion of idols into the water bodies. So if we talk about the crimination practices, these practices are often marked as the most environmental practices than traditional embankments and cascade burials. In addition, with the passion of celebrating the festivals, we often forget the hazardous impact of these immersion of idols into the water bodies. These idols are made up of clay, cement, plastic and also some of the toxic paints are used in the decoration of these idols. After the immersion of these idols into the water bodies, their ingredients starts to release and because of that ingredients, the water becomes extremely acidic. Also, that polluted water gives birth to many harmful skin diseases which are harmful for the human beings. These are such huge threats that we are facing at the moment right now. Thank you Shrishti for informing us about the dangerous things that are happening due to these activities. Now Mahi, could you please illuminate about the eco-friendly alternatives that we can use instead of these materials so that our environment is well sustained? So thank you for providing me such an opportunity to express my views on what alternatives we can use to save our mother earth. So let's start with festive culture. During Durga Puja and Ganesh Chaturthi, people used to bring holy statues to their home and then they used to immerse them in the water bodies. And we know that they pollute the water bodies on a larger extent. So what we can do is we can encourage the worshippers to use softer clay that would immerse and dissolve in the water very easily. In this way, we will not harm the sentiments of the particular religion and we and we will be able to save our environment also. So now let us move towards cremation and burial, both of which are done on religious suspects and have a huge harmful effect on our environment. Some villages along the slurs of Gange had been named as Gange Grants under the Namami Gange project. They have adopted a greener way of cremation by using 100 kg of wood instead of 500 kg. Infinity Burial Suit is also a sustainable way of protect protecting the environment because it helps to promote the growth of flora and fauna around the burial sites. So I would like to conclude by saying that there is always a sustainable alternative for all our practices. What we have to do is we need to find them and we need to perform them to make our earth clean and healthy. Thank you. At last I would like to conclude this by saying that 
This environment is ours and we are the one who creates and destroys it. The misuse of technology, science or resources can lead us to pay harmful results in future. So the approach towards the environment and development should be looked after sustainably. Thank you for taking out your precious time for having a look at our talk show. We hope you liked it. So let's be together and make our mother earth better for the future. What an interesting and informative talk show. Moving on further, here we have Nazir Ali Zafar and Bhavya Pathyay of class 12C with their videos on the various environment protection acts. was an outstanding performance. Now moving on further, we have a video by Aditya Bajaj on the conservation of water. What an informative video. 
Now moving on further, we have a video by Ruchira Srivastav from class 11C wherein she will be enlightening us about the various means and measures by which we can save and protect our environment. Good morning everyone, my name is Ruchira Srivastav, I am from class 11C and today I will be presenting my topic how to save our environment. As our Mother Earth has given us such a beautiful place where we can live, breathe and raise ourselves. So as being a part of this natural evolution along with 7 billion people on this earth, it is our responsibility to protect our environment with the help of small ways which can clean our environment from pollution and garbage and it may can save endangered animals and plants and much more because we are the only uh, one here who can save earth and there is no planet B for us. So here we go with our different ways which can help us in quick recovery uh, of our earth. Idea to save water. To save water, here are some innovative ways. Fix all the leaks around the house. To save the water, Japanese have innovative toilets which is known as toilet tank sink. Many toilets in Japan have a sink attached to the toilet tank that releases clean water to wash hands rather than people having to flush the toilet and wash their hands at separate sink. This option lets you wash your hands with fresh water before it enters to the toilet bowl by which we can save lots of water in a day. Idea to clean water Water from air, zero mass water Desalination, water from the sea Purification of water by plants Juncus effusus is a grass like aquatic plant that grow up to 3 half feet Soft brushes also remove heavy metals such as zinc, copper, cobalt from the water. Kettles, blurish, ketonella, and canna, hibiscus, tulsi. Ideas to clean air? Here are some ways which can help in reducing air pollution. Vertical forest, smoke-free tower, electric self-driving cars, giant smoke sprinklers. There are some of the plants which can help in purifying air. English envy, bamboo palm, Chinese evergreen and daisy. Ideas to use garbage in a good way. Here are some innovative ways to use garbage in useful ways. Fly larvae to recycle organic trash, composting human bodies, building with glass, zero waste and package free stores, etc. Above are some of the creative waste solutions you probably haven't heard about it yet. 6 Waste How you can put the waste into good use by recycling Letting it decay, burning it, co-firing, gasification, composting Perhaps the oldest and yet the most efficient way to manage waste composting is very helpful in limiting the negative effect on our environment The Conclusion we should try these innovative ways to protect our Mother Earth by which our future generation will not suffer from any kind of environmental disaster or we can say lack of resources. These ways are might be new or old or we can say time taking but if we start it from now then it only will give good advantages to us only. Thank you. What an interesting video. Now, the next video coming our way is by Shivani Singh and Kaushal Gupta, wherein they will be enlightening us about the pride of Chandigarh and of India, the wonderland of waste, the rock garden. It's frankly said by a scholar for most of history, man has had to fight nature to survive. In this century, he is beginning to realize that in order to survive, he must protect it. Actually, humans have disturbed the nature in such a way where we find it very difficult for our future generations to survive. But in this worst scenario, can we add the value to quality of nature? Can we convert the waste and barren land into beautiful site full of lively nature? Of course, yes. Today, we are going to discuss about such innovative idea which converted the industrial and other waste into a beautiful garden, that is, the rock garden in Chandigarh. I am 
am Shivani and I welcome you all to be the part of our history exhibition journey. This beautiful rock garden was established in 1957 which is spread across an area of 40 acres. This garden is also famous for being one of the most eco-friendly gardens in the country as it has been built solely by home waste and other industrial waste. Also, the sculptures in this place are being created by using items such as bangles, ceramic pots, tiles, bottles and electrical waste. It won't be an exaggeration to state that the brilliantly crafted sculptures in the rock garden of Chandigarh are a delight. Apart from these gorgeous sculptures, this spot also boasts of man-made waterfalls. And not just these, there are other facts about this garden that make it stand out among other wonders of our country. Nechand, the founder of Rock Garden, started creating this garden secretly during his spare time in 1957. He used to work as a road inspector with the Public Works Department and spent almost 20 years to create this beautiful place. He started by collecting stones, discarded junk, stones from nearby villages and gathering them in a small forest patch near Sukhana Lake. You will be surprised to know that people were not aware of this artistic side of Nechand as he used to work during the midnight hours without anyone's knowledge and also managed to hide his wonderland and creations from people for more than a decade. Over time, there were more than 2,000 sculptures created by him. The sculptures of Nechand have been part of several prestigious exhibitions held around the world. In fact, they have found their way into famous museums across the world. Nechand used his artistic genius to give the wings to his passion. He started making sculptures with those discarded materials and gradually turned the barren patch of land into a fantasy land. Nechand's beautiful mind resulted in the formation of heaven on earth, that is, the rock garden. It's necessary that we should take our every step in favor to protect our mother earth because the beautiful idea comes from the beautiful soul. Thank you Mr. Nechand Sahani for realizing us about the importance of our mother earth. What an informative video. Now moving on further, here we have Shruti Manocha of class 12C with her video on timber, the future of buildings, wherein she will be presenting a very unique and unprecedented idea about saving the environment. Greetings. This is Shruti Manocha, student of class 12C, St. Teresa School. The theme of my project is the timber future of buildings. Buildings and structures, can they be made in a more eco-friendly and sustainable manner? Yes, with the use of timber. Buildings and structures made with timber are more durable, beautiful as well as practical. They can also help control climate change. How you ask? If we decrease concrete and steel to only 10% of the buildings and structures we make and make the 90% out of timber, then we can help reduce global carbon emissions by around 4%. The wood absorbs carbon dioxide around it and curbs and encloses it within its boundaries, thus lessening the level of carbon dioxide in the environment. This process is called carbon capture. But chopping trees, is it sustainable? Studies have shown that chopping ancient trees whilst taking up adequate replantation and preserving wildlife, putting this ancient wood into long-term uses is surely a sustainable idea overall. In the Northern Hemisphere, The forest cover has increased to such an extent that every 7 minutes the wood yield of Europe is enough to make a four member timber house. 
while in India, a prerequisite to put this concept into practice is to increase the forest share in the Indian subcontinent. CLTs or cloth laminated timber provides us with panels that are more durable than iron and steel. They can help to make anything ranging from floors to walls to even ceilings. The French government has decreed that any new public structure that comes into existence needs to be built 50% out of timber and rest 50% out of concrete. This is the first step towards aiming for a healthier and brighter future for our planet. Above all, studies also do suggest that people living within structures formed with timber or wood are more healthier and happier than ever. So, this makes timber not only eco-friendly, but also human-friendly. Thank you. It is said, photography is the love affair with life. And to present similar idea, here we have Sivanj Bharadwaj from class 12C with a video containing his self click photographs of the nature. Broken bottles and charred pieces of glass. Wadded up newspapers tossed on the grass. Pouring of concrete and tearing out trees. This is the environment that surrounds me. Poisons and insecticides sprayed on our food. Oceans filling with thick oil crude. All sea life destined to a slow, awful doom. These are the things we are to consume. Mills pumping out iron, expelling yellow fumes, airlines emitting caustic gases from fumes, weapons of destruction tested at desolate sites. This is the air. That's to sustain life. There has to be something that someone can do, like raise the awareness to those around you, that if we don't heed the problem at hand, it's your life at stake. The destruction of man. Thank you all today for your patience and your efforts. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead.